Well, Jenny, I'm really pleased to be talking with you about leadership in the NHS because it seems probably one of the most complex environments in which leadership could possibly be exercised. And the NHS has really bought into the idea of leadership. But it seems to me that just when you reach the pinnacle of success as a consultant, as a medic, suddenly you're asked to acquire a whole new set of skills in terms of leading the organisation and joining the strategic groups of the organisation. How do medics feel about doing that? I think that that represents a view of the past, All if right, I may, okay. in the sense that mm -hmm. um, there is no doubt that there has been problems in the perception of managerial relationships and consultants sometimes are reluctant to put themselves forward, uh, considering perhaps going to the dark side or because management formerly would seen something remote from clinical practice right. and not necessarily informed in a good way mm. by clinicians. Well, I think that is changing. Mm. And uh, I think that the way it's positively changing is the realisation that to take on what is an enormous and threatening and challenging moment of becoming a consultant and all that entails, mm -hmm. and at the same time simultaneously being expected to acquire overnight managerial and leadership skills for which you're not trained is really a step too far. Yes. And so you describe very eloquently my own experience of making it up through an organisation and then having to perform leadership roles which I really wasn't trained for and that was very much uh, the former way but the realization mm. that the NHS is a place that needs good management and mm. good leadership has really filtered down to the beginning and from undergraduate training so it so starts right at the beginning now it's it really has for most mm. every university has interpreted it somewhat differently but mm. the focus now is first of all introducing medical students, a concept never mentioned in my entire medical training, about the fact that they do have a role, both as leaders and as managers. Mm. And there's very several aspects to that. The last thing you want to perpetuate is that somehow that they're the top, they're great, they're the people who call all the shots, because right. of course that is not the reality. No, a very complex organisation, a hospital or in running a health authority. So the training comes first of all in making them understand that they need to be part of a team right. and their own behaviours and responsibilities mm -hmm. are part of a team, their own personality on the influence mm -hmm. of working within mm -hmm. a team uh, and that begins at, as I say within the medical school but the other elements around um, leadership are not necessarily big bang one hero at the top but bringing issues of leadership around the patient experience, yes. about what does a patient care about. The patient cares about, obviously, wanting high quality health care delivered, but also issues around safety. And they actually want a positive experience. They don't just want technical medicine delivered to them. They want it delivered in an empathetic and appropriate manner. Yes. And the patient voice is much more um, measured we get feedback about what when it's been a negative experience from the mm. patient, not only from complaints, there are surveys about what's uh, gone well. And introducing medical students to these concepts early on helps them realise that the category of sort of leadership and management is much broader mm. than being the hero with all the answers. Yes. It's about being part of a team and seeing ways in which actually sometimes small incremental changes mm. could be made. We did... Um, for example, some pilot projects on asking medical students to look at a particular ward. How could the patient's experience be improved on that ward? Mm. And one of the small changes was that one of the patients said that they would very much like to have their feet washed and something mm. of a pedicure. It was a long stay. Yes, yes. And uh, it was a minor adjustment. Mm. And it actually really improved the patient's yes. experience of quality and, and being cared for on yes. that ward. Other things they've come up with are um, helping the system for reporting x-rays or yeah. access of car parking to patients for investigations. Mm. And so they run these small projects mm. which are orientated in a team way, looking at processes, and very much at the focus and centre of these is improving the patient experience. So really what they're being encouraged to do is to think about not just their particular expertise that they're developing, both as medical students and then as they get into a specialism, but how they fit into the whole. 
and how what they do fits in with all of the other things that contribute Absolutely. to patient care. So presumably they must be encouraged to acquire some very difficult skills when you are expected to have good answers, good medical answers, um, of actually being more inquiring, of listening to people, being more empathetic to the stories that their patients tell them and perhaps the nurses and so on that they have to work very closely with. I, I think that those elements of being empathetic and hearing and listening mm. and being part of a team, that is something that has been actually taught in medical school for about a decade. I think it's taking it one step further, mm. and that is taking that information and implementing it. Right. Doing something constructive with it, as opposed to, mm. I feel your pain, I feel your pain, and I think I could do this yes. to make it better. Yes. And I'm not talking about giving a painkiller in that context. So I think that that's a helpful advance. I think there's another couple of positives about this. Mm. Uh, firstly, it shows that it takes the role of leader out of the hands of the one or two individuals, the 1% who think they're the her mm. heroic leader. So it makes it more applicable. Mm. And um, I think also it goes beyond gender, ethnicity and all the other stereotypes mm. about who is the leader. It makes everybody feel, I like the inclusion of it. Yes. And also it takes it away, as you say, from people's personalities and much more into the practices of Absolutely. the organisation. Um, and very much in relation to all of the other people, not just in the immediate team, but the broader organisation that they have to come in, into contact with. And do you think that then we'll be having a very different experience in the NHS in another decade when these people have been in uh, senior leadership roles and they've actually reached the top of their medical tree? I think that, uh, shall we say, not, I think it, I would hope it would be improved and I think that, that those elements of focusing on the patient mm. and their experience are very positive ones. We have to be realistic in terms of financial uh, mm. constraints. I think that I, I am positive that these, those that show an aptitude can also continue to develop and grow mm. as leaders by taking experience during their registrar and training time. So in fact, they're a lot further along that leadership journey when they actually mm. become empowered as, say, the consultant equivalent roles or consultants themselves. And so I think that hopefully their level of managerial skills will be more sophisticated they'll feel more able to make difficult changes. And the other key thing is hopefully their peers will see them as doing something useful and helpful for the organisation, yes. as opposed to slightly self-serving, oh, well, they're no good at doing clinical work, oh, no wonder they're a manager. These slightly, well, not slightly, very pejorative, mm. negative uh, aspects mm. that... that, that, that leadership and management will be seen ev to ev be everybody's responsibility. So will this improve the relationships you think with medics and their and other clinicians with the, the professional managers in the NHS? I would hope so. I mean there's definitely a desire to have clinician leaders. So uh, I think there are some people who some of the best managers I've worked with have never ha not had any clinical training. So I think it's very arrogant and also misleading to assume that the best managers are de facto those with a clinical training, be it nursing, allied health professional, medical. That's not the case. And in but fact the NHS relies on a huge number of managers who are not medically trained but nonetheless are essential to keep absolutely. such complex organisations absolutely. running smoothly. And, and let's and, face it, have yes. done a tremendously good job mm. in very difficult circumstances for, for many years. So I just think it, it's it's a blended environment I'd hope that we get to in the end so that the, the, the clinical voice is very much more at the centre of what we do.